All right. Well, welcome to the Enterprise Architecture Podcast. Also want to welcome uh, my guest, Matthias, to the show. How are you? Great. Thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. So in your intro and kind of we've chatted before this a little bit, uh, you mentioned the nickname <laughs> Architect Kid. Uh, now, you're not a kid anymore. <laughs> I'm assuming we won't throw numbers out here, but you and I look and feel about the same age. Um, so you're not a kid anymore, but you're also not, you know, a 60 year old either. So it's an interesting nickname. How did you earn that nickname? Yeah, so I think it was one of uh, well, my my temporary colleagues when I was uh, consulting as an enterprise architecture consultant. I think now almost eight nine years ago, I started my career in enterprise architecture roughly ten years ago, and um, back then, and yeah, I, mean, I still get this thing that I look a lot younger than I really am. So I won't go into details as well. But uh, back <laughs> then, you can assume I looked, you know, a lot lot younger. And I was part of a very senior enterprise architecture team, and I was basically in charge of like you know diagramming and tooling and making sure like the architecture deliverables were like looking good and then i, I really deployed a completely new approach for that uh, architecture team that included like using infographics and storytelling and you know uh, more kind of you know smarter ways of doing stakeholder management and um and they really kind of you know uh, yeah that really had an impact and um they said you know you you know, we are we are getting old. We're getting too old for this job. That was the kind of response from some of these colleagues that were <laughs> saying, you know, we need this, we need the architecture kit to uh, to step in. And so they basically, yeah, they basically announced like a new generation of enterprise architects uh, joining, you know, the world. And um, yeah, I was happy to be part of of the uh, part of that. Uh, I guess because yeah, they named me architecture kit, and I always kind of thought it was a nice uh, nice name to keep, like to never lose that uh, young touch in in what we do and what I do. Um, and I always think, hey, how can we, you know, be fresher and newer and you know more impact sure. so that's kind of where it came from so basically the young kid and new kid maybe on the block bringing in fresh ideas keeping maybe keeping them young as well to to somewhat of a you know older industry if you will right yeah just quick example like i was in a meeting where they had like a meeting with a senior business stakeholder to talk about a complex change initiative and they showed these this guy all kinds of diagrams that were modeled in archimate this architecture language you know this modeling language and what I saw happening was during the meeting, like the guy was just guessing like what he was looking at. Like he didn't understand the shapes, didn't understand the, you know, the icons, the iconology. And then so basically we, yeah, from that, we, you know, I did propose to develop a new kind of communication style that would, you know, take yeah. away a lot of the complexity and focused on the story. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's just, um, yeah, a good kind of practice to, uh, to adhere to and to, to build on. Cause it's not easy. I mean, it sounds maybe sounds sure. easy in a short story, but it's not easy. <laughs> Well, from from here on out, uh, when we see each other and hang out and in uh, in meetings and chats and on this podcast, I will now only refer to you as Architect Kid. So, oh, let, no. let's do that, right? <laughs> let's, let's, all, all right. right, so all right, Architect Kid, here we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. So, speaking of hanging out, you and I got the chance uh, to actually meet in person because uh, we do not live very close uh, to each other. Um, but we got a chance to meet in person at the company-wide kickoff, which we do every yep. year. Um, this is yep. the first one actually, you know, post-COVID. Um, but it was three full days of inspiration and vision casting from our leaders, including you. Um, and so obviously we're seeing a lot of trends in enterprise architecture. So I think it's only natural that we as a company evolve as well. And, you know, you've got a very important role here at Biz Design and you play a huge part of uh, the bigger picture for our future. So if you don't mind, uh, I'm sure everyone listening would enjoy hearing, now don't give too many secrets away, uh, <laughs> right? So, but what does biz design look like in three, five, seven years from now? Yeah, so, you know, first of all, I, I really, you know, like to work also on our long-term vision. And uh, then I always start, of course, you know, what happens at our customers, right? What do we see happening over there? Because our company might grow in terms of people or, you know, the product, you know, our platform will probably change and will evolve. But if I look at, you know, what's happening, I see that, you know, organizations are only getting more complex. Um, we see uh, companies investing uh, more uh, time and, and money in change, in changing their, you know, for example, their big digital, their big digital landscapes, but also, you know, 
business architecture, all kinds of procedures, bringing new products and services to market even faster. And, you know, there's also a lot of data behind that, uh, that, you know, the speed of change, for example, is accelerating so that uh, so that um, companies are actually, you know, had, you know, lack the they lack the they lack the speed to to achieve uh, their desired changes. And um, actually, there was a recent survey out there where um, there was like 97 percent of executives indicated that the speed of change is increasing every year. Um, however, if you look at the statistics, there's still like seven out of ten change initiatives that are, are flopping. They they just fail. They they fail to meet the desired business outcomes. They set business outcomes to you know they they aspire to to achieve when they started. And so if I look down the road, you know three, five, seven years, I think this trend that we're seeing is that um, companies will um, change their perception of you know, using design in business. So they will go beyond saying, oh, design, that's something that like a user experience designer does to to create an app, for example. Yeah. Actually, we need to apply design to our business. And I really believe that, you know, in a few years from now, I don't know, let's make the statement by 2030, business design will be a mature discipline in large enterprise. It will be a key discipline to achieve, you know, change in complex organizations. And so what I think is that, um, it's really important to build a platform that's highly collaborative uh, to include all, all kinds of business designers to work together. And um, yeah, I mean, you were talking about trends, right? Um, we, we recently launched um, this enterprise architecture trends guide where we talked about a couple of trends in, in enterprise architecture. So there's trends like, you know, sustainability, how you can use architecture to create, you know, you know, to, to make, you know, sustainability drivers make it very actionable or artificial intelligence where uh, artificial intelligence where you know i don't know chat gpt meets enterprise architecture <laughs> yeah um and one of those trends is also um i very, think very applicable to your question which is really about how enterprise architects uh, are really becoming like influencers of change so where usually um, i think you know the good old-fashioned enterprise architecture is focused on you know standardization reducing technical depth uh, getting to grips with your you know architecture portfolio um these things still hold, but I see the architects uh, developing a position of, you know, becoming like a knowledge broker. So they will actually enable a lot of other stakeholders to basically access the architecture. So you're a product manager like me in a large company, you want to bring a new product to, to the market within a year, then uh, yeah, the enterprise architecture should be kind of facilitated to you. You should almost have like a self-service situation where the architecture is communicated to you in digestible, you know, ways. And you can basically assess the, you know, the, the feasibility of your ideas as a product manager. And and so I think enterprise architecture is becoming more of a more and more of a self-service kind of discipline in terms of the information that's being made available. So these architects, they become, you know, traders of knowledge <laughs> of how the how yeah. the organization works. And then I think, yeah, what what will happen is that a lot of these architects, they will um, focus more and more of their time on future state design. So. Um, one of one of one of my colleagues sometimes he talks about architecture archaeology. <laughs> so a lot of you know companies uh, get, you know spending huge amounts of time and money and energy on like capturing current state, uh, so that you know there's a baseline architecture in place to 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 make you know, good decisions about you know where to change, when to change, how to change, which makes sense. But more and more of this stuff is now automated, and um, you can yeah you know digest a lot of data. Um, that tells you that tells you stories about you know your current state architecture. So I think what will change is that companies will have like just enough current state architecture, but will have a lot more like yeah architectural talent working on you know future state scenarios, options, and serving the organization with you know digestible uh, architectural information to base decisions upon. So that's a bit of a a future perspective. I think um, yeah, comp you know design and you know I, I especially like to talk about business design. So the design of business will be a much more mature discipline just like you would have an IT department or an HR department to do HR or IT um, I think there will be um, yeah, a design department or a design office that will become more like dominant and present in, sure. in, in organizations so that's a kind of a future future perspective that, that we're looking at well I gotta be honest with you are you sure you want to stay in product because I mean you threw out uh, some marketing content there <laughs> I mean pushing the uh, the latest seven trends and enterprise architecture content piece so Anytime you want to switch departments, man, I, I, we'll, we'll take you over here on the marketing side. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. And you mentioned every, everything is marketing, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you mentioned, you know, influencers, and that's, you know, I mean, 
ninety percent plus of kids these days want to grow up and be an influencer, right? So you know, I'm sitting here thinking as you're talking, like man, like enterprise architects are already on their way to becoming influencers, yeah. and that's like the most like coveted job that people want. So yeah, um, yeah, it's you know. uh, I think it's good time. So I think even um, it's uh, you know on on Glassdoor in the U.S. I think last year enterprise architecture was enterprise architect was like the most popular job or most you know wanted job yeah. in the U.S. I'm not sure if it's still this still the same, but just the statistic that pops up in my mind right now, I just think that. It's also just a symptom of organizations that are in need of like excellent communicators, excellent influencers of, you know, complex change processes. So sure. here we go. Yeah, well, and we've had to change a lot, right? I mean, especially given the past like couple years of, of what the whole world has gone through with, you know, the, the pandemic and everything. And, uh, you know, change is inevitable. And I think, you know, as we're learning and seeing and some of these, you know, the research we're doing and you're doing, change is happening a lot more than it used to right like i mean absolutely shoot we we yeah. might wake up yeah. tomorrow morning and something else might change of how we do work together i mean just changes constantly so having having everything designed very well for that change is is a critical key component to a business yeah absolutely agree so you and I, we as we were kind of planning this podcast and putting in, in the work behind the scenes, you you shared this like really interesting concept uh, that I just felt was was super fascinating where you you have these three bubbles, right? That make, you know, as is you know, most of oh, this yeah, if you're if you're listening to this, it kind of makes a Venn diagram. So I'm gonna I'm gonna help kind of paint the picture for you. So these bubbles and this theory are basically all about how three very important elements of a company must all collaborate in order to achieve success. Uh, can you mind explaining this theory to our listeners? Yeah, yeah. And I think we definitely need to uh, follow up with some kind of, you know, uh, additional visual uh, visualization of this concept. Some additional marketing, quite, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> some additional, some additional uh, storytelling as well. No, but I think this is quite easily to 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 communicate. It's um like a mental model, a visual model that I use a lot also in interacting with with our customers, and uh, it's basically a visualization of three bubbles, three circles that uh, that overlap, that slightly overlap. So yeah, indeed, you have this Venn uh, kind of diagram, and there's three bubbles. So there's uh, the first bubble, it's called vision and strategy. The second bubble, it's called change. The third bubble, it's called design. And these bubbles, I think, are present in any kind of organization, in any enterprise. And um, I'd like to call out these three bubbles because together, I would I, I'd say if they work together uh, in a good way, they basically ensure, you know, continuous and successful change. So a company needs to transform its operations, boom, bubbles working together and, you know, uh, changes, changes are delivered. Companies needing to launch new products and services, bubbles working together, boom, uh, results are being delivered. So, so it's all about the outcomes of having these bubbles work together. But I think in reality, you often see some kind of you know extremes uh, when it comes to these uh, these bubbles, and that gives a that makes for like nice storytelling. So I'd like to call out some you know I'd like to describe the bubbles and and and, and talk a bit about how they overlap or they basically lack uh, lack the kind of overlap that they would need. Yeah. Because um, you know so there's vision and strategy. That's the first bubble. Um, this is basically the bubble in organizations where leaders decide about the direction of the company. So this is about setting a vision for the future and then basically guarding the implementation of that vision by setting goals and then kind of implementing it. So this is not about um, planning, um, like to quote one of my favorite kind of strategists, uh, Roger Martin. He's very famous in the strategy area and uh, strategic management. And he always says, you know, uh, strategy is not planning. Strategy is about making choices. So this bubble is basically about making choices. So a bank wanted to focus on a specific customer segment or a healthcare organization that really needs to cut down costs in a certain you know uh, process that they operate. So this is about future vision uh, setting and and strategy. So really the direction of the organization, the goals the goals of the organization. So that's the first bubble. Then the second bubble is the change bubble. And the change bubble is basically where you know where people work that plan and implement change, that execute change. So this could be a large bank with a hundred plus you know agile kind of you know software development teams that build new apps, customer facing apps all the time, or improve you know customer journeys across their different platforms. Um, this is also where often large project management offices or program management offices work, or project portfolio managers do their work in budgeting and timing change. So that's the change bubble. 
And then the third bubble, and that's where, you know, uh, we feel really comfortable, right? It's the design bubble. So it's the bubble where all these architects of all sorts work together. So enterprise architects, but also business architects, information, data, technology, solution architects, large group in the design bubble is, you know, solution architects. Um, and this, these people in this, this bubble are kind of tasked with, you know, designing and analyzing the organization. So um, basically capturing how the organization works, you know, and, and working on, you know, scenarios on you know, how to improve it, where to improve it and what that will mean. And that does, you know, that in, improves um, coordination of change. And it will also make it much more explicit what the impact of a new vision and strategy is on, on the future. So that sweet spot, the ideal situation is that, you know, the future direction of an organization, the strategic choices are translated to, you know, proper like impacts, you know, where an organization will you know, pose demand, where, do we, where would we need to change the most, where does this have an impact, do we need to build new business capabilities, what is impacted, what kind of, is this greenfield, brownfield, what's the, you know, the implementation, the planning, strategy and change. Um, but what you see and, um, yeah, you see, you can see a couple of funny situations and the, the visual that we'll, you know, share will explain more. But there's companies that, you know, invest in, you know, setting vision and strategy. Let's say, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, um, a big consulting firm left, leaves the boardroom and, yeah, basically board members or directors, they're left behind with, I don't know, 100 great PowerPoint slides. But it's just a paper strategy. So there's some choices being made, but they don't know how to, trans how to translate it to, you know, changing the organization or, yeah, redesigning parts of the organization. So that's a paper strategy where just this vision and strategy bubble is very dominant, but not really doing anything, not really getting anything done. And the same thing goes when the design bubble is really, you know, dominant or when the design bubble is at least really active. Let's use the word active here. And it's really the classic situation of, you know, architects or designers in an ivory tower. We just, you know, drawing nice pictures, but these pictures are not connected to what's actually on the mind of, you know, for example, board members or, or, or directors or, yeah, I mean, Certainly not addressing stuff that's, for example, um, yeah, question uh, put up put up uh, in annual reports of the organization, and uh, and and then there's also yeah where let's say where there's a very powerful change organization, uh, so where there's a lot of money involved, then yeah, uh, let's say a bank spends a billion dollar each year on on change on let's say digital transformation, then that might also lead to anarchy. <laughs> so when there's project and program managers uh, fighting over budgets and and, and timelines. Um, and actually the link with vision and strategy, this top bubble, this, you know, this directive bubble is, is lost or, you know, very implicit. Yeah, then it, you're going into an organization uh, that, you know, can might have a lot of uh, anarchy. One of my other colleagues, you know, or famous Mark Langhorst, he once used the term uh, decibel driven decision making. It's like, you know, he who shouts the loudest will get his, his or her way. Um, I think that's an interesting concept that you see there. And, and then there's the situations where these bubbles they they overlap. So when the when the vision and strategy bubble overlap with the design bubble. So let's say you're an architect and you have great relationships with the business management of your organization. You're very well informed of strategy and you know how to translate it to your design work, but you're not wired into the change organization. So you don't have any you know meaningful relations with the people that actually implement and execute change. Then then you're building castles in the sky. So it's not an ivory tower or paper strategy, but it's more like a dream that's never you know coming to fruition. Um, and if you're if designers are completely left out of you know change, then you have this or have this point uh, where this is basically chaos and spaghetti. So it's a classic situation. Company sets out new you know three five year targets, and uh, you know big project and portfolio management offices are being you know created, and without any design or architectural guidance. Um, yeah, projects start with the you know, so every and everyone is trying to you know execute these product pro, uh, these projects with the best intentions, but then. There's no idea what's the bigger architecture, what's the bigger impact of this. Uh, did we already change such a thing uh, a few years ago? What's what's our baseline here? Um, so a lot of chaos being being created. And and the last situation, and then we'll get back to to the story and the sweet spot. Last situation is, um, you know, there's the change bubble, there's the design bubble. Let's say they work together, but they're completely devoid of any vision and strategy. So in a lot of organizations, vision and strategy is, is implicit, or you know, at least you know, fuzzy. That could also lead to an awkward situation where an architect is trying to, I don't know, enforce some kind of standardization or best practice or, you know, common sense into a change initiative or tries to help a project. But yeah, the architect doesn't have any kind of, you know, uh, business goal or business vision to point towards saying, yeah, what what motivates this design, right? Why did we, you know, why are we focusing on, uh, on this or that aspect of changing a certain process or a certain architectural element? 
Um, and then there's this, yeah, the architect might be perceived as like a police agent, a police officer for the project and portfolio people, because yeah, they're like, yeah, why are you trying to enforce something that doesn't relate to where our business is going? So very interesting situations. And uh, I think this is this is just a kind of kind of hyperbolic story where we use a lot of extremes to make a point, but it's all about finding this sweet spot of like meaningful design and, you know, impactful change guided by vision and strategy. It's very idealistic, but I think it helps, you know, our customers as well. It helps them to think, where are we and how can we further mature our design bubble to keep up with these other bubbles? Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's it's an interesting concept, but it, if you boil it down, it's also kind of, I mean, it's the way that we all function, right? I mean, you look at even, you know, business and relationships, and what have you, whatever, like, you know, example you want to throw in there, if we work in these silos and we're not working together, right, then it's going to crumble, no matter which bubble is the one that's driving you know, out of those three bubbles in your example, no matter which one is driving the project yeah. or the idea or the vision or whatever, if it, if that bubble's not working with the other two bubbles, it's going to fail. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah, than likely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and yeah, uh, it always makes for interesting conversations. And then sometimes when I'm in a workshop with a customer, for example, I challenge them, like, you know, <laughs> explain your situation and people immediately get it. And they start talking about, you know, how these bubbles interact or the lack of interaction or the opportunities that are still there. Um, and I think it really fits also our future vision of having this, you know, business design discipline where this is actually more balanced out. And um, yeah. I think it's all, yeah, it's it's a, it will be a necessity in many organizations if they, yeah, they want you know to achieve effective change disciplines. Well, and and you know, I mean, I, I not to continue to drive the point home, but my last example because I am uh, enjoy a good a good story is if if we didn't, you know, you and I we got on a call last week and we planned this podcast out and we knew the questions that we're going to get asked and kind of the framework, right? Well, if you and I just hopped on this call this morning and I just said, "Hey, man, I'm going to rapid fire questions at you, and you're just going to have to answer them." Well, that wouldn't have been a very productive podcast, right? But getting together and working together and being on the same page in alignment, right? Like for this show produces a greater outcome. Agreed. 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 Yeah. And then still some new insights, right? I mean, uh, there's always a new kind of twist to to a story. And uh, I think that's also what we see happening uh, at, at our customers where, like I said, these these architects are really, you know, transforming from like, you know, you know governing standardizers that enforce a certain architecture. They're really transforming in like knowledge brokers. And that also, yeah, you can just see that also the, the, the architects that use our platform, they are increasing their interest in like yeah in in strategy also like you know how does this work and you know, what are the people in how do how do the strategic planning processes actually work in our organization how can we become a part of that and kind of serve that in yeah. the best way and so i think that's a really nice uh, really nice development and i think also in a way we are <laughs> we are having this uh, kind of collaboration ourselves as well so yeah sure good. So let's try something then. I let, let's try something real quick. All right. So for my for my last question. So for everybody listening, we did not talk about this question. So I'm going to throw a small curveball at you and see what happens. Yep. Yeah. So what are you working on currently that you are most excited about? <laughs> yeah. So I'm currently um, working on um, an initiative um, called Business on Out of the Box Solutions. And that's that's that. But within that initiative, uh, I mean, we and what we do is we, you know, we aim to build in uh, more specific guidance for specific users of our platform. And one of the coolest things that I'm currently working on is um, our solution architecture management solution. So a lot of solutions okay. in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, there's a very exciting, you know, not not necessarily new, but you know, let's say up and coming new group of users of of of, of our platform. And they, they're called solution architects and they go by a lot of names. It could be like cloud architects or I don't know, Microsoft specialists or I don't know, process architects. They have a lot of different names, but in the end, they're, you know, focusing on yeah, basically yeah. connecting the design and the strategy and the change bubbles because they're implementing uh, something, you know, driven, driven by business strategy, but then also deep into the, you know, uh, into the, into the, um, into the weeds of change. So they're deep into the business, they're deep into the implementation domain from an architectural perspective. And um, I recently uh, interviewed a customer uh, that does a lot of solution architecture. And one of these one of these uh, customers in, in a call, um, 
he was a solution architect and he said, you know, um, and they were already busy design customer. And he said something like, yeah, every time, every morning I wake up, um, I open up my laptop and I'm on biz design. Like he was, I don't know, like he was logging into his game console to yeah. finish the game he, he played like yesterday evening. <laughs> and um, I don't know, maybe he should, you know, get up and first, you know, maybe, I don't know, go for breakfast, do some meditation and then, you know, get on biz design. <laughs> but, you know, I got the point. I got the point. He was really... Um, you know, he was ready. wired into he was ready he was wired into into our platform because you know that's where he saves a lot of time you know has a good has a good workflow there's a lot of architectural information that he as a solution architect from his you know point of view can can reuse and he can serve his stakeholders he can you know save a lot of time on communication and and you basically create better analysis of some of the options for for new solutions work and the project that I'm working on is really focusing on how can we create a better workflow for solution architects. So really going deep into that role, understanding, you know, what does the daily daily routine of a solution architect look like? And then basically from there, you know, try to see what kind of, you know, stuff can we bring into that, you know, solution architecture's experience in, in our platform. And um, it's just a very dynamic, uh, dynamic role. And yeah, these solution architects, they really need to be, you know, almost like the best communicators in their company, which really fits my personal interests and kind of passion. So um, if I would name uh, yeah, that, uh, if I would select one kind of idea that I like the most work, like working on the yeah. most, this is definitely, let's, I would definitely go for this one. Okay. Well, and that one has a huge impact, right, on our business and our customers and potential customers, right? So certainly uh, you've got a heavy lift in front of you, but a, it sounds like yeah. a good and exciting yeah, lift for you. So. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty exciting because when you get, go back to that design bubble, like um, if that design bubble is a, like a fragmented piece of all kinds of, you know, fighting designers that don't align their work, <laughs> Then how is this design bubble going to play a role in this, you know, uh, high stakes uh, game of digital transformation, right? So, this really, I think, is a is a, a nice example of how we try to unite architects. How we, in this case, yep. bring you know ent- enterprise and solution architects together, you know, to work in one repository and to basically find the workflow that works for them. And that's just sure. a really cool, uh, really cool thing. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what's in store for that. Well, we'll be uh, on the lookout, I guess, all throughout the year as you release these out of the box solutions uh, and, you know, put your hard work out there into the world. So, uh, you know, yeah, we thank I you mean, for that. Yeah, awesome. Looking forward to that. And I just, I mean, let's throw in a bit of marketing, right? We didn't do that enough, this uh, this podcast. No, I mean, end of <laughs> April, 20, 20, 20, 25th of April, we're having a nice uh, customer conference uh, around BD Connect. And um, and also we are going to do more communication around, but these out-of-the-box solutions will yeah, become more and more prevalent and prominent in the, in our external communications as we bring this to, to our prospects and customers. So yeah, yeah. stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Stay, look at you, like a good marketer. Stay tuned, right? Like, are you sure you don't want to come over to the marketing side? I mean, I, like I said, yeah, I don't know yeah, if we're hiring, yeah. but okay. So, yeah, well, man, talk about I appreciate it, later. it. Thank you so much, uh, Architecture Kid, if you don't mind that I call you that from now on. Uh, appreciate your Why time, not? man, not? you know, and your, uh, your wisdom and your information. Um, also, thank you all for listening to today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. We had a little bit of fun, talked enterprise architecture, uh, product, all that good stuff. We even did a little bit of marketing on this podcast. Sorry about that, but it is what it is. So if you enjoyed today's show, uh, make sure you leave us a positive review and of course, share it with your friends. So until next time, take care. All right, cheers.